Welcome to the 2021 Incoming Ninth Graders Parent Meeting. We hope this information will help you and your student navigate the new world of high school. Let's begin by introducing you to our administrative staff. Mr. Jeremy Ross is the principal. Ms. Leslie Galeri is the academic dean. For students whose last names begin with A through C, your counselor is Mrs. Cindy Holt and your assistant principal is Mrs. Patty Sanderson. For students whose last names begin with D through HE, your counselor is Mrs. Kim Spencer and your assistant principal is Mr. Jimmy Heffernan. For students whose last names begin with HI through MA, your counselor is Mrs. Claudia Hurst and your assistant principal is Dr. Josh Jones. For students whose last names begin with MC through SA, your counselor is Mrs. Karen Harrington and your assistant principal is Ms. Dina Carlton. And for students whose last names begin with SC through Z, your counselor is Mr. Douglas Barnett and your assistant principal is Mr. Danny Guidry. We also have a licensed professional counselor, Mr. Armando Martinez, who's available to help your student. Students will graduate on the foundation plan with an endorsement for a total of 26 credits. An endorsement can be thought of as a high school major. It allows the student to pursue particular areas of interest. All incoming ninth graders will need to select an endorsement. Please know that endorsements can be changed, but the student needs to work closely with his or her counselor to ensure that all graduation requirements are met. The five endorsements from which a student may select are Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics, also known as STEM, Business and Industry, Public Services, Arts and Humanities, and Multidisciplinary. Let's look at the specific graduation requirements in more detail. Your student is required to graduate on the foundation plan with an endorsement. The number of credits in each area depends on your student's interests and goals. You will work with your counselor to determine the best fit for your student's needs. However, a student must have a minimum of four credits each in English, math, and science, and three credits in social studies. The two foreign language credits must be in the same language. Your student will also need one fine arts credit and one PE credit and will round out the remainder of credits in the selected endorsement area. Let's look at the endorsements more closely. GISD is excited to offer the STEM endorsement. There are three ways at GHS to earn this endorsement, either through math, science, or engineering. Please note, to earn a STEM endorsement, the student must successfully complete Algebra II, Physics, and Chemistry. There are many ways to earn a Business and Industry endorsement, Agriculture, Graphic Arts and AV, Finance, Information Technology, Marketing, Culinary, Auto Tech, Yearbook, and Debate. Students can pursue a public service endorsement via any of the following areas, health science, education, law and public safety, and JROTC. For the arts and humanity endorsement, a student can meet this endorsement requirement via English, social studies, foreign language, and fine arts. The last endorsement or high school major is the multidisciplinary endorsement. This endorsement allows students to take a variety of electives in different areas while still graduating with an endorsement. A student who pursues the multidisciplinary endorsement must take four social studies credits. Your student will select his or her endorsement using this form when they meet with the counselors to register for classes. The parent will have opportunity to acknowledge this endorsement when you complete the beginning of the year online registration forms. Let's look closer at the endorsement declaration form. 
your student will be asked to supply one or two possible career choices. This aids counselors in helping them select courses that align with their current career interests. Their career choices may change, so we will ask this question yearly. Next, your student will let us know about their post-secondary plans. Are they going to a two-year college, four-year college, enlisting in the military, attending a technical school, or entering the workforce when they graduate? We know that these plans may change and we'll ask them every year. They will sign this form and parents will have opportunity to sign an endorsement acknowledgement when they complete the yearly online registration paperwork. You will notice there are subcategories to each of the five endorsements. Your student will select only one endorsement with one subcategory. There should be only one X in this box. Students have the opportunity to earn additional recognitions. They are listed here for your review. It is important, however, that you remember that a student must graduate with a distinguished level of achievement to be eligible for automatic admission to a Texas public college and university. Additional graduation requirements include the completion of 20 hours of community service, CPR training, which is generally completed in seventh grade, the completion of the federal uh, free application for federal student aid, and a demonstration of college career military readiness by either earning a national or international certification, meeting college ready standard on the TSI, ACT, or SAT test, successfully completing nine credit hours, or successfully completing three dual credit hours in math or English. Attendance is very important. To earn credit, a student must be in attendance for 90% of the course. It is imperative that if your student misses school due to a doctor's appointment or court appointment, that you get a note and turn it in to the GHS attendance clerk. Students are allowed three parent notes per semester. Notes will not be accepted if they are turned in after three days upon the student's return. Notes should be received on the day that the student returns to school. During the 11th and 12th grade years, students are allowed two college visit days. You must use them each year as they do not roll over to the following year. Granbury High School has a unique grade point GPA system. Several years ago, we gathered focus groups made up of community members, current students, former students, teachers, parents, and administrators to evaluate our GPA system. Out of these meetings came our current GPA system. Granbury High School is on a 5.0 unweighted GPA scale. For students who opt to pursue a rigorous academic load, we instituted a system that honors their effort. A student who completes 16 advanced academic credits, also known as AACs, will have their overall GPA multiplied by 1.25. So if a student had a perfect unweighted GPA of 5.0 and successfully completed 16 AAC credits, his overall GPA would be multiplied by 1.25 and his weighted GPA would become 6.25. This is an example only to demonstrate how it works. In addition, we wanted students to be able to have an idea of where they might rank and what their GPA could be early in their high school career. So we conditionally apply the 1.25 multiplier when the student has successfully completed six AACs. To retain the multiplier, the student must meet the following benchmarks. By the end of their 11th grade year, they must have successfully completed 10 AACs. By the middle of their 12th grade year, they must have successfully completed 13 AACs. And by the end of the fifth, six weeks of their senior year, they must be passing 16 AAC classes. 
A student who does not meet these benchmarks will have the multiplier removed and their GPA will revert back to the unweighted 5.0 scale. In addition, our focus groups wanted students to be able to take four years of extracurricular activities and not have it impact their GPA. So we allow for two fidelity points to substitute for two of the 16 AACs. A student can get a fidelity point by being in transcriptable activities such as band, choir, theater, athletics, and ROTC for four years in grades nine through 12. For example, if a student takes athletics four years and theater four years in grades nine through 12, he will have two fidelity points to use toward the count of 16 AACs. Our course catalog lists over 70 classes that are designated AAC eligible courses. A full explanation of the GPA system can be found in board policy. It is important to remember that middle school credit credits do not calculate in rank and GPA, nor are they eligible for AAC consideration. This chart further interests illustrates important benchmarks regarding rank, GPA, and the application of the 1.25 multiplier. Remember, a student must successfully complete 10 AACs by the end of the 11th grade year, 13 AACs by the middle of the 12th grade year, and passing 16 AACs by the fifth six weeks of the 12th grade year to receive the multiplier. If these benchmarks are not met, the student's GPA refers back to the unweighted 5.0 scale. More information is available in the course catalog and in local board policy. We offer a wealth of AAC courses for your child to meet the 16 AACs. These are our honors, AP, and dual credit offerings. These are our career and technology offerings that satisfy AAC requirements. Here are additional career and technology AAC eligible courses, as well as our fidelity eligible courses. The link to the 2021-22 course catalog can be found on the Granbury High School website under the Counselor tab. Your student has two available Advanced Placement or AP course offerings available to them during their ninth grade year. AP courses are college level courses and the rigor and work level of these courses are college level. A student can receive college credit for these courses by making a score of three or higher on the AP exam. There is a fee for the AP exam. The first course that they are offered is AP Human Geography. It is a college level class and it does fulfill the ninth grade social studies requirement. Students taking an AP course should have strong study organizational and preparatory skills in order to successfully manage the AP course. AP World History is another college level class that allows ninth graders to meet his or her social studies requirement. Throughout high school, students will have the opportunity to register for and take college preparatory exams. At the ninth grade level, Students are eligible to take the PSAT test. In addition, he or she will take the applicable EOC test required for graduation. In addition to meeting graduation credit requirements, your student must pass the Algebra 1, Biology, English 1, English 2, and U.S. History EOC exams. Having students take AP and dual credit courses in high school can be a serious advantage to our students, primarily because the student will more likely be more likely to continue toward post-secondary opportunities. 
Also, fees at a community college like Weatherford College are less expensive than a four-year university. Even if the tuition and fees are identical to a university setting, it's always more expensive to maintain multiple households, even if one of those households is a dorm room. It is important to check with colleges that your student is considering before taking a dual credit course. You want to ensure that the college will accept the transfer credit and how they will accept that credit before you take the course. Colleges may accept the credit as an elective credit versus a course in the student's particular degree plan. Call the college and speak with an academic advisor. An approximate AP exam fee is $100. An approximate dual credit course fee is $400 per class. If a student is considering a service academy or an out-of-state university, he or she should consider taking AP courses versus dual credit courses. Advanced placement is based on a single test while dual credit is based on the course grade to earn possible college credit. If a student is attending a Texas public university, he or she might consider dual credit. It is imperative that students contact the prospective college to determine what the institution will honor. GASD is committed to the continuation of high rigor academic opportunities for our students. In order to obtain college credit for an AP class, the student must take the AP exam and score according to the guidelines outlined by the college or the university of their choice. There are advantages of taking AP courses, even if you do not intend to take the AP exam. The rigor is advantageous to all students. These dual credit classes are the current offerings that have been in place at GISD. GISD students have the opportunity to earn core complete courses to transfer to any public university as a complete core for any degree. In dual credit courses, your student will receive two grades, a high school grade and a college grade. These grades may be different. Be sure to have your student log into the Weatherford College website so that you and he can regularly check grades on the college side. High school grades can be accessed via Skyward Family Access. Should your student need accommodations in a dual credit class, you must submit paperwork to Weatherford College. For testing accommodations for the PSAT, SAT, and ACT tests, contact GHS counselor Karen Harrington. Some students may choose to earn an associate's degree in high school. If you choose to do so, you must talk with your GISD counselor as well as a WSC or Weatherford College academic advisor. Counselors work with your student to ensure that they are on track to graduate. This is a form that counselors utilize to track your student's process progress. Students who graduate in the top 10% of their class are eligible for automatic admission to the Texas Public University system. The student still must meet the application deadline and supply the required ACT or SAT test scores. The exception to the top 10% rule is the University of Texas at Austin. They only have to accept the top 6%. It is important early on that you make a plan for making college affordable. One such way is completing the financial application for federal student aid or FAFSA in October of your student's 12th grade year. Students will choose seven classes plus three alternate classes when they meet with GHS counselors to register. It is important to keep a balanced workload when choosing classes. Students will complete their class selections using the freshman course worksheet. 
We will have them complete each section and declare their intention to either pursue or not pursue the 16 Advanced Academic Credits, or AACs. They will declare their endorsement, or high school major. They will select one class for each of the core areas by circling the course. For those eighth graders who are currently in algebra, they will either select geometry or honors geometry. When completed, a student should have selected one English class, one math class, one biology class, and one social studies class. Next, students will select their three elective classes. Remember, if you are in band or athletics and want to continue in one of those classes, that you will need to put that down as one of your electives. You will either select band two or the second year of the sport when you write it down because you are getting high school credit for year one during your eighth grade year. If you are taking Spanish one, you will need to take Spanish two next year. Be sure to write it down as one of your electives. If you have not started your foreign language requirement, we recommend that you select either American Sign Language one, Spanish one, or French one during your ninth grade year. Getting your foreign language requirement out of the way during your ninth and 10th grade years allows you to take two period career and technology classes during your 11th and 12th grade years. Be sure to look at the course selection sheet provided with your worksheet to write the course numbers after the hashtag or pound sign. Once you've completed your three elective course selections, you will select three alternate courses. Don't forget to include the course numbers. Alternate courses are the courses that you want counselors to enter should one of your electives not be available. Make sure your alternate one class is the very next class that you want to go into your schedule if one of your electives is full or unavailable. Review your worksheet carefully to ensure that you have selected four core classes, three elective classes, and three alternate classes. You will submit the pink copy of your registration forms to your counselor before you leave. The white copy is for you to take home to your parents for their review. Just a quick note about extracurricular activities at the high school level. Tryouts are most often required for many sports. Most activities require before and or after school participation. Competitions and or practices often occur in the evenings, weekends, and during holidays. Speak with coaches and sponsors about time and commitment requirements. In addition, you must have a physical prior to the start of school for both band and athletics. Double check your worksheet one more time before you turn it in. Make sure that you have a total of 10 courses. Counselors must have your pink worksheet before you leave. Feel free to email your counselor with any questions that you may have. Following are the GISD Gifted and Talented program slides for your review. Gifted and talented is different from high achieving. Some high achieving students are not gifted and talented. Some Gifted and talented students are not high achieving. GT students have the potential for performing at a remarkable high level, and our job is to serve them and help them tap into that potential. In grades 9 through 12, parents may request GT testing for their students. Parents must complete forms for testing to occur. If your student qualifies for GT services, you will be notified. A GT student should work independently with other GT students and with non-GT students. GISD strives to serve our students in all three areas. TPSP is the state and GISD board approved GT curriculum. TPSP requires a project which can be a product or a performance. 
GT experiences may include a Texas Performance Standard Project, a GISD-based project-based learning unit, competitions such as History Fair, Science Fair, and UIL, and experiences throughout the entire school year and during the school day. GT students not wishing to take an honors AP or dual credit course may either furlough from GT for one year or exit the GT program. GT resources are listed for your reference. Contact your campus administrator, counselor, or Becky Strain with any questions that you may have. Thank you for participating in this parent, pro this parent meeting.